I'm Josh Wicks of Wicks Rods and Customs, and I proudly sponsor this video. My name is James Cameron. No, not this James Cameron. This James Cameron. I grew up in Coney Island, Brooklyn, New York. I now live in Virginia. But before all of that, I had another passion. I loved Rolls Royces. Well, a few years ago, I accomplished my dream. My purchase, a 1985 Rolls Royce Silver Spur. And that's where the nightmare began. But it was through trial and error that I discovered that there was a way to actually purchase these cars and maintain them that could save the buyer of future cars like this thousands of dollars. Now that is the sound of power. Let's take a trip, come on, come along with me. I have now taken that knowledge and will now share it with you. My name is James Cameron, and I want to welcome you to the Rolls-Royce and Bentley University Buyer's Guide. Let's start class. All right, now what we're getting ready to do now that we've got the windshield prep, got the windshield, the old windshield's out, got the body prep, windshield prep. Now we're getting ready to run the XP30 on it, uh, the urethane. Uh, comes into the big sausage pack. Come on. Oops. Comes out with a big sausage pack. You gotta cut one end off, put it in the gun. Make sure your tip goes where it belongs. And you just screw it on. And then you just this is an electric caulking gun, which makes it a life a whole lot easier. And then you come over to the body. Reach over. I reach over as far as I can to get a good bead. Just run the bead as straight as as easy as you can, as straight as you can. Want to make sure your your bead's a half inch tall or so. And then you just do the same process on the passenger side. Which I prefer to have two people on. You ready? <laughs> Making sure you got the same gap all the way around. And then you just press it in. A little excess urethane down here, so I'm just going to take a piece of cardboard. Make sure it's up underneath the edge of that glass. And take the excess off. That way you know when they put the cowl back on, it doesn't stick to the cowl. This is just the reverse process. Now you're got putting everything back on that you took off. Now we got to make sure we get the rubber back on the trim where it belongs. Because I do have slots in them. That way when you put it back on the vehicle, they're already in there where they belong. And pray to God that the rubber stays on where it belongs. <laughs> Pinch it a little bit. That way you know where to lock in and stay. Let me put it back on the vehicle. You gotta make sure you can line up both of your holes. that you can barely see because of the prime. Make sure that, you know, your rubber goes back where it belongs like it was when it first came in. Uh, 
everything's sitting perfect. You want to push it down a little bit. I'm done with this side. What you want to do is go to the other side before you put in where it belongs. As you can tell, it just lined up to where it's supposed to line up. Now you may have to turn around and put a little bit of pressure when you're in getting ready to put the screws back in to make sure you get them lined up where they belong. I'll start over here on the passenger side. I'm going to use a little pick, a little trick that I've learned over the years. Yeah, this can be a little messy as you can tell as you put the rubber back in with fresh urethane. Alright, that one's in. I used the pick to make sure my holes were lined up between that little thin metal and the body. Now before you touch the interior on these, because they are cloth, you make sure you clean your hands all very well. That way when you put them back together, you don't leave any fingerprints. Or urethane, which takes forever to get off. And this is slide back down in there. Make sure you got all your rubber, all your wires out of the way. And it just pops right back on. Now when you're done, that side is complete. We'll go over to the other side and set the reverse the same side, do the same thing. Make sure you adjust the rubber because it's not quite lining up all the way with the rubber or the hole inside. Still use the factory holes. Uh, that way everything looks good on the outside, still on the inside too. The glass is all in. All it now is just clean up and put the rest of the interior back together. And that's how you install a Rolls Royce server spare windshield. We got it manufactured and it's got our glass, our logo on it. It says Danny's Auto Glass and Mirror. Uh, it has no ammonia in it, so it doesn't leave any streaks. You can use this glass cleaner on anything. Make sure you clean the outside, inside, and make sure you got all your stuff off. Uh, just cleaning the excess urethane off that was there. And that's it. It's done. That's step by step on, on how to do a 1989 Rolls Royce installed by Bobby at Danny's Auto Glass. Well, Bob, I want to thank you for telling my class how to do something like this. Not a problem. I hope they learned how these cars, again, can be taken care of and maintained for less money than what they would normally think it is. See you next time because yes. I guarantee you there's going to be some more people. I hope not anytime soon, but that's all right. I'm ready for it. So. All right, man. Be well. Be good. Be good, too. And I appreciate right. you just... To prevent anything, just try to stay as close away from this vehicle as possible. SUVs, 18-wheelers, uh, just drive just drive safe with common sense. Don't rush. Uh, and when you're at home, make sure you leave a window down a little bit. That way there's no cabin pressure. That way if you do have a rock chip, it doesn't break it as soon. Try to keep it in the shade as much as possible. Other than that, if you need anything, come see us. You got it. Take care. All right. Class. See you next time.